So there's going to be a loop for the pass. Now within each pass, you scan through the numbers. So do you see that we need a nested loop? You need an outer loop to scan through the passes and within each pass you need an inner loop that scans through the numbers to find out if the adjacent ones are in the required order or not. All right. So there's going to be a nested loop. All right. So the first loop is going to be the pass loop, which has as many passes as there are numbers. So how do you find how many numbers are there? Again, I'll have to write int n is equal to numbers dot length. Remember, n was a local variable in the main. I've not passed it, so I don't know the numbers of numbers. All right. So I find the numbers of elements in the array. And then I write the outer for loop, which is for the pass. All right. So it starts from one. There's a first pass. And how many total passes are there? Pass is less than or equal to n. As many passes as there are numbers and pass plus plus. So this is my outer for loop for the passes. Now within each pass, what do I do? I scan over the elements of the array, right? So within this, I'm going to have another for loop. All right. Now what does this for loop do? It checks the current element with the next element. All right. So current element starts from the zeroth element till the last element. All right. So again, I'm going to have an in current which starts from the zeroth element and it goes on till the last element. All right. So current is less than n. Now this is a tricky part. We'll come back to this later. Let's move on current plus plus. All right. So what I have written so far, as you can see, this is my outer for loop, which is for each pass. For, for passes and this is my inner for loop this current for loop which is for elements within the array all right now current is going to be the index of the array element all right and how do i do it i check the element with its next element all right so what do i write within the inner for loop i check if they are in a required order that means if numbers which is my name of the array the current element is greater than numbers of current plus one now the what does this mean that means is the current element greater than the next element remember current is not the element it's the index of the element all right so numbers of current if it is greater than the next element then what do we do we swap them right so then i'm gonna write the we have to swap them swap what we have to swap numbers of current and numbers of current plus one right we are going to swap these two elements because the first element is greater than the second that is not the desirable order now how do you swap two elements you swap them using a temporary variable now hopefully most of you know, know this i'm going to create a temporary variable called temp in which i'm going to store the first one which is numbers of current in numbers of current i'm going to store numbers of current plus one and in numbers of current plus one i'm going to store the temp this is not really difficult it is just swapping two elements let's say you want to store a uh, swap a and b you can't directly write a is equal to b and b is equal to a because you lose a particular value so what you do is you create a temporary variable put a in the temporary variable put b in a and put the temporary value in b so this is exactly what i have done i have swapped the values within numbers of current and numbers of current plus one because numbers of current was greater than numbers of current plus one if this condition is not true this is where the if ends end of if all right if numbers of current is not greater than numbers of current plus one we don't want to swap it so nothing is to be done all right what will happen again it will go to the next element so first time current is zero it will check the zeroth element and the first element and decide whether it needs to swap or not it will move on current will become one again so it will check for the first element with the second and move on and so on and so forth till it reaches the end of the entire pass at the end of the pass what will happen again finally once it goes outside this for loop it will go inside the outer for loop so pass will become two that means in the second pass what do we need to do all right so this is how it works now a uh, couple of things are missing in here but let's look at it incrementally all right now before we do anything let's simply compile and run our program to ensure that it works all right okay so let's go back to my uh, terminal all right and let me try to compile the program okay 
um okay so i have one error which is missing return statement remember we had not return the return statement in bubble sort method it is expected to return an integer array so let me return the sorted integer array so i'm going to return numbers which is my sorted array all right so now having done this let's again compile it okay so it compiles fine okay now let's start running it so how many numbers do you want to sort let's start with very simple inputs let's say i want to sort only three numbers 2 1 and 5 okay now do you see there is an exception thrown where is the exception thrown exception thrown is in bubble sort and what is the exception array index out of bounds exception what does array index out of bounds exception mean that means you are trying to access an element that is not a part of the array for example if your array has five elements the actual indices are from 0 to 4 and you are trying to access an element at the 7th or the 8th or the 5th index which cannot be the case all right so we have an array index out of bounds exception we are trying to access an element that's not a part of the array and where is this exception generated at which line in the bubble sort method on line number 30 All right, so let's quickly go back and see why that exception is generated. Here is my line number thirty. Now it might not be very easy to spot the error, so let's go over it uh, word by word. So what do I do? Current goes from zero to n minus one. Remember, current is the index and not the actual element. All right. Now the actual element is numbers of current. Now clearly there does not seem to be a problem here because current goes from zero to n minus one and numbers of current takes on a acceptable uh, element of the array. Let's move on to the next term which is numbers of current plus one. Now when you do current plus one, you are going one beyond n minus one in the last iteration, right? When you do current plus one, current can take maximum a value of n minus one here. and when you do n minus 1 plus 1 that means current has actually taken the value of n now remember in an array of n elements there is no index n the highest index is n minus 1 so this is the part that is generating the array index out of bound exception and trust me this is the most common error that most students make in bubble sort right you have to be careful about this condition this is a very crucial condition and you have to be very careful about it all right so now that we've got array index out of bounds exception we need to handle where current stops so it should not stop at n minus 1 it should stop before that all right because then we'd compare it with the next one all right but anyway do we want it to stop at n minus 1 every time we don't want it to stop at n minus 1 every time we want to reduce where it stops remember in the first pass the highest number is fixed so in the next pass we skip that one we go only till n minus 2 in the third pass we go only till n minus 3 in the fourth pass we go only till n minus 4 so every time where the current stops depends on which pass it is all right so actually the condition here is current should not only be less than n but it should be less than n minus pass this is the correct condition so in the first pass as you can see this will take the value of n minus 1 which is what we want in the second pass it will take the value of n minus 2 because pass takes the value starting from 1 2 3 4 and so on and so forth so this is how it could work all right so now let's go and try running it again let me clear this up and compile it again and let's see if it compiles okay that is good so java bubble sort and let's say how many numbers you want to sort three numbers 2 1 and 5 again printing the numbers you entered all right so a key thing that we have forgotten i guess is that after in the main method in bubble sort what do we do we sort the numbers we return it in the sorted array but we have not yet printed the sorted array we haven't done the last part printing the sorted numbers which is fairly simple we write um the sorted numbers are and then we simply call our method which is very helpful print array and we pass it the sorted array so now let's try to compile and run it um does it compile yes it does let's again try to run it let's say i have three numbers that i want to uh, sort 2 1 and 5 the sorted numbers as you can see this part the sorted numbers are 1 2 and 5 just to make it always clear in the print array method let's uh, write a new line after the array is printed because it's not really getting clear here all right and now let's try to make it something more complicated give a more interesting input 
All right, how many numbers you want to sort? Let's say we want to sort five numbers. Uh, four, one, three, ninety-nine, seven. Yeah, that's five numbers. All right. So the sorted numbers are one, three, four, seven, and ninety-nine. That's your bubble sort. Now, typically, what you would want to do is print each and every pass as well. So, what should you do is in this method, in your bubble sort method, uh, at the end of every pass, print the current snapshot. So, print what happened in pass one, print what happened in pass two, print what happened in pass three, and so on and so forth. So, where does the pass end? The pass ends after the inner for loop ends because at the end of the inner for loop, you've gone over all the elements. Now you can print the pass. So, let's write. Printing pass and let's give it the pass number as well. And then how do you print the array? Again, we use our helpful method print array, and then you pass numbers to this method. All right. So now let's try and compile it again and uh, run it. Hopefully, it compiles without errors. Yes, that's true. Let's run it again. Bubble sort and let me give it four numbers: um, ninety-nine, thirty-three, ten, and forty-eight. And let's see what happens. The numbers you entered were this in pass one. The largest number takes its place. That is, ninety-nine goes in the last position. In pass two, the second largest goes in the right position. In pass three, thirty-three goes in the right right position. And in pass four, the everything gets sorted. So finally, the sorted numbers are this. All right. Now, if you want to quickly see how this actually worked, let's see using an animation. You have a set of numbers. And in the first pass, so pass is the outer for loop, all right. And the indices are of course this. Current starts from the zeroth, so current plus one is the first, all right. So you compare numbers of current and number of current plus one. Remember, current is the index and not the number, all right. So the current and the current plus one numbers get swapped because of the order. You move on. Current plus plus happens because of the for loop. So now current points to one, or current has a value one, and current plus one is two. No swapping required, so there's no swapping. The if, the if condition is not met, automatically current value gets updated. Now current points to two, and there's a swapping done. Current plus plus happens because of the for loop. Again swapping current plus plus, swapping. Finally current plus plus, and there's a swapping. Now remember, if you hadn't written the current condition properly, what could potentially happen is this: current would have pointed to six, and current plus one would have gone to seven. There is no seventh element, so this is wrong. This is something you need to be aware of: that the array index can go out of bounds because of the loop condition. All right, so this is something you need to be careful of. So now the inner for loop has ended. What will happen is the outer for loop. Pass plus plus happens. So now the second pass starts. In the second pass, what happens again? Current is initialized to zero. So current again starts from zero and current plus one. And this is how it moves on. This time current ends at four, which is why current plus one stops at the fifth element because the sixth index is already sorted. Quickly, if you want to summarize it in the main method, three paths taking input from the user. Fairly simple. Then making a call to the bubble sort method. Finally, you print the sorted array, and within the bubble sort, there is a nested loop: the outer loop for the pass, the inner loop for scanning over the elements of the array. All right. So the outer loop is a pass. There are as many passes as there are elements. The inner for loop goes over each and every element within the pass, and it stops at the correct position. In every subsequent pass, you stop a little early. Right. The most important thing you need to remember is this. This is the condition that can cause a lot of trouble. And finally, within the inner for loop, there is this if condition where you decide whether you want to swap or not. And then you print each and every pass if you are required to. If you don't want to, this is optional. And finally, you return the array. So this was bubble sort for you in all its glory. It's actually a fairly simple sort, and uh, hopefully this video made it still simpler for you. But there's a small challenge question for you. Do we really need to do all the passes? Let's say in the second pass itself, you figured out that the numbers are already sorted. Do you really need to do further passes till you reach the nth pass? I'll give you a small hint. Check out if there have been any swaps. Anyway, so this was bubble sort, and um, if you like these videos, there are more videos on our YouTube channel. If you would like to get our product, look us up on the Facebook group, facebook.com/rebelguru. If you have any questions, uh, do post them on the wall on the Facebook group, and hopefully we shall be able to answer that. That's it for now from me about bubble sort.